Welcome back. With the blocks in place on the mould, it's time to start preparing the sides or the ribs of the violin. The first thing to do is to get them down to about a millimetre in thickness. I'm using a block plane and a ruler as a reference. The apple wood actually planes pretty nicely. It's leaving a nice finish. I also like to run it through my fingers. You can feel the stiff parts of the wood and uh, sometimes that's even a better indication of where you need to take more wood off than, than measuring. And on to the bending iron. So I'm going to start with the center or the seabout and this bending iron is made in a shape to facilitate doing that. Um, the idea here is that you heat up the resins in the wood and that allows the fibres in the wood to slip past each other and when it cools it retains its new shape. So I warm the wood and then start feeding it around the tight curve of the sea belt and turning it around and doing the uh, the not quite so tight bottom curve of the sea belt and then I'll fit that into place on the mould and I may have to adjust those curves back on the bending iron to get exactly the shape that I want and then on to gluing using our grass fed Sonoma Candy Ray's beef tendon glue I use these little counterform blocks to get an even pressure on the part that I'm gluing. Once glue's dried, I come back and shape the outside part of the block, ready to take the upper and lower bouts of the violin. And then back onto the bending iron. And this apple wood actually bends really nicely, better than the maple that we normally use. I'm fitting the ribs onto the mould. The nice thing about this skeleton mould is that if you want to, you can vary the outline of your violin in a controlled way. More glue, and the top bouts go in place. This tendon glue has been working well. I have to use it a bit thicker than the bone glue that I normally use and it does tend to gel up a bit quicker but um, as I'm getting used to it I'm finding it quite workable. And there's the ribs in place. Now that thin edge is going to be a gluing surface to hold the back and top in place and it's not thick enough at the moment so we're going to add another strip of wood, a lining. These linings are made of a local box elder um, and they're cut to fit nice and snugly and just to be sure they fit I clamp them into place with clothespins. And now, a nice little trick for getting the clothespins off. It's kind of advanced technique. And finally, cleaning up the edges of the ribs and linings, getting ready for gluing the back and top on. I use a big plane for this because it's less liable to dig too much wood out of any one area. That you do have to be careful about grain directions around the corners there. And finish it off on a sanding plate to make sure the rib tops are all on one plane. There's the finished rib structure. The next thing I'll be doing is drawing around it onto the back and the top and that will give me the outline for the finished instrument.